And welcome back. And in this video, we will see how to set up and perform the ANSYS Maxwell Ice Pack Electrothermal ETM Co Simulation. Interpret the results and see how the heat profile changes with some design changes. Let's get started. Go ahead, open EMB underscore eddy current underscore ice pack design in AEDT. Go to the desktop tab and select ice pack to insert an ice pack design in this project and rename it to EMB underscore ice pack. Double click on the EMB underscore 3D1 design. Click on 3D modeler window and use the control A to select all and use control C to copy. Double click on the ice pack design, click in the 3D modeler window, use control V to paste. And you can see the entire model geometry, along with the material information, is copied into the ice pack design. Easy. Expand the model tree, select any unwanted bodies like the sheets and the line, and they're not required for thermal analysis, and you can delete them or make them non-models. Right mouse click on the ice pack design, select a solution type, in that pop-up window, choose solution type as steady state, the problem type as temperature and flow, click OK. Again, right mouse click on the ice pack design, select design settings. In that pop-up window, keep the ambient conditions as shown. And on the gravity tab, choose gravity vector, global Z. The direction is negative because it implies a negative Z direction. And this setting is only to define the gravity direction. We need to include additional gravity settings in the analysis setup to include the effect of gravity in this model. Double click on the create region under the model tree and change the region sizing as shown here. Note that the region length should be at least two times the largest length of the model in the direction of the gravity to capture the plume accurately. And for this model, it's in the positive Z direction. Select the region object, right mouse click, select all faces, right mouse click again in the 3D modeler window, select assign thermal, opening, free. And in that pop-up window, keep the defaults and click okay. Hold down the control key for multiple selects. For the coil, the brake plate, the core, right mouse click, select assign thermal, EM loss. In that pop-up window under the general tab, select use this project. Check both of these options. Simulate source design as needed and preserve source design solution. Under the variable mapping tab, Select map variables by name and click OK. In the pop-up window, keep the default name and check objects linking for volume loss and click OK. Right mouse click on analysis folder. Select add solution setup in that pop-up window. In the radiation model panel, choose discrete ordinates. Check include gravity. And this ensures that the gravity effect is included as discussed earlier during the design settings. Under the radiation tab, change the values as shown. And under the solver settings tab, add a small velocity in the flow direction. This helps offset the natural convection plumes which will arise opposite to the gravity. Click OK to close the windows. Right mouse click on the setup one under analysis, select add two-way coupling. Two-way coupling will help increase the EM loss accuracy when there are sensitive temperature dependent materials in the design. And the adaptive loss data exchange happens between Maxwell and Iceback and as many additional times as the number of coupling iterations that's set in that pop-up window. Typically two or three coupling iterations are sufficient to get a good solver 
convergence. Let's set it to four. And if the two-way coupling is not set up, then the coupling iterations will happen once. And we're back to one-way coupling. And this does not require to set up the thermal dependency for the object materials in the Maxwell design. Click OK to close the window. Go to the simulation ribbon. Validate the design to make sure that there are no errors in the setup. Right mouse click on the analysis, click analyze or analyze all to launch the two-way coupling. And after the analysis is completed, go to the results tab, select solution data. And now you can confirm that there is an increase in the mapped losses from the first coupling iteration to the next two couplings. And then it stabilizes after two iterations, depicting the real world result. Now, let's plot the temperature map of our system. Expand the planes under the history tree window. Select the YZ plane, right mouse click on field overlays, plot fields, temperature, temperature. And you can see that the temperature is more than 600 degrees, which is not good. And from this, we can understand that the thermal aspects of a design also plays a major role in designing any electromagnetic device. You cannot simply conclude that it's a design without understanding the thermal performance. And to understand this in more detail, let's go ahead and try two more designs to analyze. So in this new first design, set the current and change it to one amp and the resulting temperature is reduced to less than 200 degrees. And now in a second design, keep that one amp current and set the solution frequency and change it to 60 Hertz. And this further helps reduce the losses in the core and the brake plate. Now the temperature is further reduced to below 60 degrees. These iterations are performed just to show how temperature varies with various parameters in the model. This is not a design advice in any way. In this video, we've seen how to set up and perform a two-way coupling and ETM analysis using ANSYS Maxwell and IcePack. Thank you for watching this video. And for more informational videos on any of our ANSYS simulation tools, please visit courses.ansys.com today.